Hey Gemini, thanks for checking out your weekly forecast for December 20 through the 26th. This is going to be for Gemini Sun, Moon, and Rising. Now, I am setting the intention for the 20th through the 26th, but you may stumble upon this video outside of those dates. And so you're going to find it whenever you were meant to find it, whenever it was time for you to hear the messages that are in it. Um... Obviously, it's a general reading. Not every single message will resonate with you, but take the ones that do and leave the ones that don't. So we're going to connect here and see what's coming up for the general Gemini collective. One more shuffle here. All right, your cards are shuffling nice and smooth, Gemini. So this makes me feel like you're coming into the week with really clear, like decisive energy, You've got a pretty good idea of where you're headed, or at least you have a good idea of what you want. Maybe you're not sure how to get there, but I do feel like you've made your mind up about like at least what direction you're going in or what you're going to be focusing on. But we'll see what the cards have to say and what messages are coming in. The first card for you is the Page of Wands, and Page of Wands is very ambitious energy. It's also very passionate energy, okay? It can be very muse-like. Some of you maybe are feeling very inspired by someone or you're just feeling inspired in general. Page of Wands can sometimes be another person coming into a situation. But in this instance, Gemini, even though I know you're not a fire sign, you might not even have fire sign placements, I feel it's you coming into the energy of page of wands i feel like you're coming into these characteristics of ambition uh curiosity determination um and the page of wands for me sometimes comes up as like this second adolescence where all of a sudden uh you're feeling uh, inspired you're feeling motivated you're focused on your dreams you're feeling this ambition uh, it's, you know, there's like the moody teenager that's depressed, that locks themselves up in their room, listening to sad music. And then there's a teenager that's like, you know, I'm going to go, you know, shave my head. I'm going to go dye my hair purple. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, you know, be famous or like whatever. And they start expressing themselves and finding their click and, you know, uh, looking at how they're presenting themselves to the world and, and, and putting out their, you know, figuring out their image, their identity, uh, what they're going to be doing in their life, in their adulthood, or what, what direction they're going in. And so the page of wands can sometimes come up that we're like in this second adolescence. We're like coming into this sense of like this adolescence where we are basically uh, in the energy here of... Um, being in this confidence, being in this drive, being very driven. You might be um, uh, like giving yourself some kind of a makeover, right? Maybe you're going to try to be more natural the way that you're presenting yourself. Maybe you're going for opposite. Maybe you're going to be more glamorous. Maybe you're uh, looking at, you know, how does this, what does this say about myself? What impression do people have about myself? You may be changing your look uh, as a part of this too, like this second adolescence kind of vibe or feeling. Overall, I just kind of feel like you're just, if I could put it in a nutshell, coming into this energy of being a free spirit, right? I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do it when I want to do it. I have faith in myself. I have confidence in myself that I'm going to succeed at what I'm setting out to do. Some of you might be doing some things in 2022 where you're trying to set yourself up to be completely and totally mobile. Like, you're setting yourself up in a way where you have income coming in or you're working uh, in a way that allows you to be wherever you want to be. For some of you, this could be like uh, trying to set up an early retirement or a passive income or some kind of work that you're able to do remotely uh, full time so that you're able to go wherever you want to go because I do feel a sense of travel. But I feel it in terms of like this big goal, like 
I want to live on the road for at least a year, or I want to go to this many, you know, countries in like this period of a time. And so I feel some of you are really focused on seeing the world, traveling, exploring the world. And some of you might be preparing to leave behind uh, certain obligations or commitments to do it. Okay, so... Um, if you're in a relationship, you might be deciding that you want to be single or you don't want this person going with you on these travels and you might be wanting to take some time apart. Um, some of you may be setting up some, like I said, some way to make money so that you can do this, but the place wherever you're working now, they might rely very heavily on you. Like if you go in and you tell your boss, oh, I found another opportunity or, um, I started a business and it, it's taken off and I'm just gonna, you know, be resigning. Like they might have a little bit of a heart attack. They might be like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do without you, Gemini. But I feel like some of you are preparing to let somebody else down because you're like, this is what I need to do for me. This is what I need to do to find myself. This is what I need to do to be true to myself. Uh, but I feel a strong sense of travel and independence from this page of wands for some reason. Some of you might be in a situation where you're like, you need to go someplace to make up your mind about what you're going to do in your life. Maybe you're wanting to make some kind of a pilgrimage or something because you feel like uh, here is where I'm going to connect spiritually. Here's where I'm going to be able to clear my head. Here's where I'm going to be able to pray and meditate and make a good decision. Maybe there's somebody you feel like you need to meet in person before you can decide what direction you want to go in. And so I feel like some of you are, are looking into making this happen. Maybe it's not happening this week, but you're making the plans this week to make it happen. The next card that's coming up here for Gemini is the King of Wands. So we got lots of fire energy coming in here. You are fiery. You are fiery right now, Gemini. I know you're an air sign, but you are fiery right now. Um, this could also indicate here, maybe if you have fire sign placements, those areas of your life might be uh, where, where you're focusing on right now or where you might be having positive shifts and changes. But the characteristics of the king of wands is going to be very entrepreneurial. So maybe some of you are deciding that you want to work for yourself. The king of wands, I once had a very interesting backstory about him where he came from a very impoverished place and there weren't jobs and there weren't opportunities, but he was able to look around and figure out the needs of the people and come up with businesses or ideas that would satisfy those needs and that people would be willing to pay him or barter with him uh, to have those needs met. And then people were so impressed. They were like, whoa, you're so smart, you need to lead us, you need to be our king. And so he began to lead the people and show the people how to create opportunities, how to be successful, and to create an economy for the people. And so I feel, Gemini, that maybe some of you are very tired of being passed up on opportunities. You might feel like every single time you try to do something for yourself or every single time that you try to get promoted or, you know, land a job, it seems to be going to somebody else. And you're like, I'm tired of sitting around. I am making something. I am creating something. And so some of you might be in this very ambitious, very just kind of over it, but over it and frustrated in a way that it's motivating you for positive change. And you may be creating an opportunity. You may be building something for yourself. I'm hearing, I will build it from the ground up. So whatever this is, you may have a very, very big vision for it moving forward, but definitely tired of sitting around and waiting for things to happen. So now you're in the energy of making them happen. Some of you might also be really kind of having a very powerful root chakra unblocking. This is going to be especially true for any of you who've begun to eat differently lately. Maybe you're eating more healthy or maybe you ate fairly healthy before, but maybe you're cutting out like preservatives or chemicals from your diet um, or you're eating just more natural food instead of 
like TV dinners. And, and I'm going to say this, guys, this isn't about weight. I'm not saying, like when I'm talking about eating healthier and not eating chemicals or things like this, I'm not saying that you're somebody who is um, like, you know, seen as a health nut or, or anything like that, or that, you know, it's like a certain image or a certain weight. You just might be putting lately real food in your body instead of things out of boxes and cans and packages. And, um, you might be finding or feeling that like you're more in touch with your body, more in tune with your body. Maybe you've had more energy. You've been a little bit more active again, has nothing to do with appearance or size or shape, um, or fitness level. But I feel like this process is unblocking your root chakra. And so some of you are coming into a very passionate energy. Some of you are maybe feeling a little bit more uh, physically inclined than usual. And you might be feeling yourself some. You might be feeling super cute. You might be feeling super hot. You might be like, yeah, this is me. This is all of me. You know, love it. <laughs> and so you just might be in this energy of um, where you're like in this very passionate energy and you're attracting this passionate energy into your life. I do feel a sense of the root chakra opening up or becoming more active for a lot of the Gemini. The next card coming up here is the Nine of Cups. And Nine of Cups is wishes coming true. Now, I do have to say this. You guys know that in the weekly forecasts, I make it a point to focus on you and your energy. And I don't like to make it about love readings. Once a month, I do a love reading. And that's linked in the description of this video. If you want to check it out, by all means, feel free to do so. Um, however, uh, in the weekly forecast, I like to try to focus on you and your energy. Every so often love messages will come in in the weekly forecast and I will get into that and I will um, share that when I'm receiving that. And so this, I don't know if I'm going to say this is necessarily a love message. It might be more of a passion message, might be more of like a physical intimacy message here. But I do feel with the page of wands, the king of wands and the knight of nine of cups, some of you are feeling really inclined to live out or act out your, uh, your fantasies, like your, your, the, the things that maybe really kind of excite you and turn you on, but you haven't had a chance to do it. Something about the page of wands with the king of wands and the nine of cups is giving me a feeling or a sense that you're coming across someone or you're finding yourself in a situation where now you have the opportunity. Like this is someone that is curious, like you're curious and they want to do the things that you want to do and you're comfortable. Maybe in the past you've come across people and they're like, oh yeah, I do that all the time. And then maybe that like made you feel like, well, I don't know because I'm still, I'm still trying to figure this out. I don't know if I'm ready for the pro level just yet. And so maybe you're, you're encountering somebody who is like on the same level as you and you feel like, okay, like I can handle this. I'm comfortable with this, no pressure. And so there could be something here where you're having a chance to, uh, you know, explore some like physical intimacy, uh, fantasies that you might have. I'm feeling like this really, really, um, physical energy, fantasy energy uh, coming in here. And maybe that's who you're trying to meet. Maybe that's what you're like, well, I got to meet this person before I figure out what I want to do here. Um, and it could be that if you're figuring, if you're figuring out, do you want a relationship? Do you want to stay in a relationship? Do you want to leave a relationship? Do you want to be single? Do you want to relocate? Do you want to travel the world? You might be like, I don't know until I figure this out or until I see this person. So, or until I have this experience, right? Uh, so some of you are, 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 are manifesting this chance to explore certain interests or desires. Now, this can also be business for some of you, though. Maybe it's your, your dreams or your fantasies in terms of like being, you know, 
financially independent and having an independent source of income and working for yourself. It can be a fantasy in that way for some of you that you're beginning to see, hey, it's not really a fantasy. It can actually become real and I'm seeing it take shape. I'm seeing it come together. The one thing about the nine of cups is it indicates, you know, being able to have our wishes come true and enjoy the fruits of our labor. But the other end of it is that we have people that maybe are looking at us like, oh, look at you. Like they're, they're, just, they're jealous, they're envious, and they're just like, you know, you think you're a big deal because you have this and you have that, or you had some success come to you and you forgot who you are and you forget where you came from and you forget all the little people and you're a sellout, right? So Nine of Cups comes up in my readings with a positive message that your wish is coming true, but with the homework message of, you have to be ready that not everybody is going to be happy for you and you can't allow that to take away from your happiness. You can't allow it to rob you of your happiness. Some of you might have big financial blessings about to come in and there are people sitting at your table right now that you would be more than happy to share with. However, what happens is that the second that that blessing is put down, the second that the banquet is put down, there are people at your table that will gobble it up like locusts and not leave you a crumb, even though you're willing to share. So nine of cups comes in to say you have to have your boundaries in place. You have to be able to say no. You have to be able to, you know, not feel obligated to hand over or to give every time somebody asks for something. And this is a good time for you to clear the table of anyone who has not been respectful or who continues to be disrespectful or who continues to be toxic or who is going to be very greedy or cause problems for you when happiness and joy and success comes into your life. The next card that's coming up here for Gemini is the High Priestess. And this is, oopsie, this is a Major Arcana card. So Major Arcana cards are going to come up anytime that we're coming into a new chapter it's a significant crossroads for us. It's a significant uh, defining time in our life. And the high priestess can indicate you coming into the high priestess energy where you're in this really high level of healing. Your chakras are clearing and aligning. You're connecting to higher self, to God, to universe. Uh, your intuition is on point. Okay. And this might make you absolutely irresistible to a lot of people. And you may have a lot of people chasing after you and trying to pull you into bed. Okay, you may have a lot of people wanting to be around you romantically and non-romantically. You may be a bit of a magnet. And the thing that we need to learn when we're in high priestess energy is that not everybody who wants us gets to have us. Some people are just rushing in like a moth towards a flame in a dark room. They don't know what you are. They don't understand you. They're just coming at you in a trance and they're not ready for you and they're not ready to bring anything good your way. And so we need to learn that not everybody who wants us gets to have us and that persistence does not equal love. Okay. This can be a parasitic connection. So there may be people trying to hook into you and feed off of your beautiful energy so again, boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Some of you are going to have an amazingly intense, passionate, physical connection with somebody. I will say that. Um, this could be Pisces or Taurus energy. Um, if you have Pisces or Taurus uh, placements, there can be big changes and shifts happening for you in those areas of your life. You may want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos some weeks those are going to resonate for you more than your sun sign. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. If you go to calendly.com slash amethyst angel, you can schedule a private reading with me there. Love readings for December are links in the description. January love readings will be up soon. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Don't forget to check out the 2022 12 month forecasts. Uh, one card for each of the 12 months of 2022 linked in the description as well. Thanks for watching guys. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Take care.